I am just so ready for it to be sweater weather. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through some of the comfort and cozy books that I love. These are the kind of things that you want to read on an autumnal day when you are curled up on the couch, when you've got a blanket around you, when you've got a warm drink beside you. If you want something that is going to comfort you a little bit and is going to feel like a hug enveloping you, these are the books you want to go for. I have tried to go with mostly low stakes book here. So nobody is going to die. There isn't going to be any violence. There isn't going to be any kind of cheating narrative. It's just going to be good vibes in here. I know that I just said it was going to be a lot of low stakes, cozy vibes and nobody was going to die. But there is one exception to that rule and that is the Thursday Murder Club series by Richard Osman. I absolutely love this. And yes, I do know that a lot of people die here and a lot of people are murdered. But it's also quite cozy in the setting of the other characters. This book series follows a group of people in their 70s and 80s. They are all living in Cooper's Chase, which is a retirement village somewhere in the southeast coast of England. I absolutely love all of these characters. They all come together every single Thursday, talk about some of the murders around their area, talk about some of the cold cases that have never been solved. One of my favorite characters in this entire series is Joyce. I absolutely love how she is still somehow filled with childlike wonder and how all of the developments that are happening in our modern world are somewhat of a spectacle to her. She's still kind of getting into grips with Netflix, for example. She's just gotten a mobile phone and she's kind of getting used to how that works. I absolutely love and cherish Joyce with all of my heart. This is the third book in the series, The Bullet That Missed, but there are two previous to it and there is one more that's following it as of now. And I am so intrigued as to how this one is gonna go. A book that is definitely for you if you love a small town setting, if you love a cafe setting, is The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Laura Gilmore. This is following Jeannie, who comes into Dream Harbor because she's going to be taking over a coffee shop from her auntie. Her aunt is ill and is old and she's not really feeling up to running this Pumpkin Spice Cafe anymore. Laurie's injection into the town is like a big burst of life into it and she is so eager to get involved and to get to know everybody except that there is one person who's a little bit against her coming in. That is Logan and he is the owner of the local bakery and he is not entirely enamored with Laurie's happy-go-lucky vibes and her free spirit but there might be a little bit of great chemistry between the two of them. If you're a big fan of Gilmore Girls, I think this is definitely the book for you because it does have a really big Gilmore Girls vibe to it. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens in here. A rather cozy and comforting classic is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. For some reason, this screams Christmas time reading at me. I think it's because the opening chapters are set around Christmas time. So it just has that kind of feeling of togetherness and family and festivity and celebration for me. But this is a kind of an all-rounder book where you can just pick it up and sink into the lives of the March sisters anywhere you go. This follows the four March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy and their mother. They are kind of coming to terms with their father being absent as a chaplain for the Civil War in America. And they're getting to terms with life, with relationships, with arguments that they have against one another, with illnesses, with bereavement. It's very much a realistic portrayal of what having a sibling is like. And I absolutely love all four of these characters. Definitely one to pick up if you want a little bit of an adventure in your books is The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. This is set in the Scottish Highlands and it is following Birdie who moves into a hotel in the Scottish Highlands. It's a four star establishment and Birdie is here as the sommelier. The problem is that Birdie doesn't know a whole lot about wines, apart from one is red, one is white, one is rosé. Her best friend Heather, who is an actual trained sommelier, has just fallen in love with a man that she has met on holiday in Italy, and she is about to extend her break so that she can get to know him a little bit better. Something that I absolutely loved about this book is how vivid the descriptions of the Scottish Highlands are. Birdie and James, who's one of the porters of the hotel, they go out on a ton of bike rides around the Scottish Highlands and it is so picturesque how these are described. And I absolutely think if you're looking for a little bit of an autumnal getaway, this is definitely the one that you need to look at. Something else to look at is a cute and cozy graphic novel. They are the kind of things that you can just speed through. You'll sit down on the couch, a couple of hours will have passed and you'll have already finished your book. One of the ones that I love and recommend the most is The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. This book follows Greta, who is being trained in combat by her mother because the art of combat that they are practicing has slowly been falling out of favor with people. 
When Greta is on her way back from the store one day, she bumps into a tea dragon who requires a little bit of rescuing. Greta falls in love with these adorable creatures and she sets out to reunite it with some of its other kin. I absolutely love how cozy this is. There is a whole kind of vibe of every single season of the year has been dealt with. There are a lot of tea making and tea pouring ceremonies. So if that's an area of Japanese culture that you're interested in, it's definitely one to go and pick up. Another cozy graphic novel that I recommend is the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. This has five books as of now. There is a sixth coming out either late in 2024 or early 2025. This is following Nick and Charlie, who are two young boys in secondary school, and they have started a relationship with one another. They meet each other while they are playing rugby together, and while Charlie has been out as gay in his school for quite some time, Nick is just coming to terms with his sexuality. This book is so wonderfully cosy. It is genuinely like a hug in a book, and one of my favourite things about it is how tight-knit and how supportive the friendship group in here is for one another. There are so many things that they go through in their young lives, such as homophobia, such as mental health disorders, such as an eating disorder, but you can truly tell that they are all here for one another and that they all have each other's backs. I absolutely adore this series. It's going to be really bittersweet when we have to say goodbye to it, but I have truly loved watching Nick and Charlie grow up and grow together. If you're into a little bit of magical realism, then I definitely recommend The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This is about Florence, who is a ghostwriter for a super successful romance writer. However, she's coming into a little bit of romance block at the moment, so she has asked her editor Benji if she can have a bit of a deadline extension. He vehemently disagrees, but when Florence goes home to kind of drown her sorrows, she is confronted with the ghost of Benji, the exact same editor she's just been turned down by. They have to try and figure out why it is that he is still sticking around and particularly why it is that he's still sticking around with Florence. If you really loved the movie Just Like Heaven with Mark Ruffalo and Reese Witherspoon, this is definitely a book that's going to work for you. I absolutely loved this and I really loved getting to the bottom of why Benji was still around and why he was still with Florence in the first place. I absolutely loved the chemistry between the two of them and it just feels like a kind of a low stakes but somewhat spooky vibes book for Halloween. Another magical realism series that you can escape into is the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series by Toshikatsu Kawaguchi. These have been translated from Japanese and there are four books that have already been translated into English. This book is set in Funicular Funicula. This is a small cafe in a back alley in Tokyo and it has a bit of an interesting secret. When you go into this cafe, a small table by the window will become free one time every single day. When you sit down here and you order a drink, you are transported back or forwards in time. You can go and visit somebody that you know who has already visited the cafe themselves if you haven't finished business or if you just want to say a proper goodbye to them or if you want to spend a little bit more time together because your time was cut quite short. However, there are a couple of rules and a couple of stipulations, but the first and most important one is that you need to come back before the coffee that you've ordered gets cold. I love every single one of these books. They are split into four very long chapters, which all feel like very short stories, all kind of interconnected with one theme. And I absolutely love every single one of them. There are some that have stuck with me for such a long time, and I cannot wait to escape into this series a little bit more. A romance series that I think is definitely a great idea if you want something that's going to get you stuck in is the Brown Sister Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. This follows the three Brown siblings, Chloe, Danny and Eve, and all three of them are so wonderful. They are interconnected and you can tell that they are all definitely sisters, but they all have such different and such striking personalities and ideas and goals and I absolutely love reading about all three of them. It's also a highly representative series. All three of the sisters are plus size. All three of the sisters are women of color. Chloe also suffers from a chronic illness as she has fibromyalgia. Danny is bisexual. And Eve has been questioning whether she is neurotypical for the majority of her book. I absolutely love spending time with all three of these sisters. They are incredibly chaotic in their own ways, but they have burrowed their ways straight into my heart. Something that definitely signals to me that it's a cosy time now is the return of The Great British Bake Off. It's one of my favourite reality shows and it doesn't particularly feel like a reality show. It just feels like a really nice group of people coming together and trying to bake a cake together. This kind of baking and cosy vibes is all captured in Rosalind Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall. 
This is following Rosalind Palmer, who at the beginning of the book decides that she is going to take part in the winner cakes at all because she and her daughter are not really doing so well financially. She's a single mother and she has been struggling a little bit recently without wanting to go for too many handouts from her super rich parents. While she is at the Winner Cakes All, she gets to know some of the other contestants super well, including Alan, with whom she strikes up a fairly questionable romance, and Harry, who is basically a builder with a heart. He is a strong and tough Essex man, but once you get to know him, he is complete softy. He's like a puppy dog, and he was one of my favourite characters that I read throughout the entire book. As I said, this is very heavy on the baking and it's kind of a love letter to the Great British Bake Off. So if that is a show that really does something to you, this is a book that you definitely need to pick up. Finally, I don't read a lot of fantasy. So if I'm gonna recommend a fantasy book, you know it's a good one. And it also has a kind of somewhat connected plot to Rosalind Palmer. I absolutely loved Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry and I think that this is the perfect autumnal cozy vibes book. This is following Viv who has just retired as an orc and she's no longer out on the battlefield but she is looking for something that's going to take up her days. She moves to a small town and she buys a little shop in the area. She's going to turn this into a coffee shop which is much more of an undertaking than I think she was expecting it to be because the people of this area have never heard of the concept of coffee. However, Viv is going to completely radicalize their lives. And with the help of Tandri, who she employs as a fellow barista, and with the help of Thimble, who comes in every morning and brings these delicious sounding cakes and pastries, all of the townspeople completely fall in love with the idea of a coffee shop and somewhere to go that they can connect with one another and drink a warm drink together. I know that this book has a prequel called Bookshops and Bone Dust, which is also set in a bookshop. So if you're wanting a kind of cozy vibe in that area, that is also a really good way to go. Those are some of the books that I think just scream out the coziest vibes. What book gives you a super cozy feeling when you're reading it? If you would love to leave me a comment, but you can't think of anything you'd like to say, then just leave me a warm drink emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.